We've seen how we can use URLs to encode data when we are using play, and that allowed us to get extra information into our controller, but the user generally isn't expected to just type in a URL, and they don't always get one from a, a different source. When we get information from the user, often it comes in the form of a form. Okay, so how do we get information from forms that the user has typed in into our application to do something with it? So this is a place where we can actually go back and we'll play with our task list because our task list is going to need to have a form inside of it. The form is going to ask for a username and a password. So let's go ahead and build a new view that we can work with here. So I'm going, this is the task list one. I'm going to have a thing for login one because we'll have different login pages for every version of our task list, potentially. Uh, some of them might not need versions, but that's a, that's a later topic. So we'll call this login one. And in this, I want to, let's see, we don't really need main. We know how that's working right now. So the login itself isn't going to take any arguments. Uh, we will call main. We'll give our page title login. And I'm just going to put a little header up here with that. And now I need to have a form. Okay, so form. Now when you create a form, you get to specify the where it's going to go to and the way it's going to happen. So I'm going to start off by using a get, which as we'll see is a horrible, horrible way to do a login page, but, but it ties things together with what we've already seen. Okay, and I am going to have this go to uh, validate login one. Now, in order for that to work, we're going to have to create a route for validate login. And inside of this form, I'm not going to put much. I'm just going to give, let's say, username colon, and then we'll have an input field whose type is text, and the name is username, and then password will be an input field whose type is password and the name will also be password okay I think that's sufficient for now if I want to see this page I need two other aspects of this I'm not going to use application. I'm actually going to close application. So we we only have what we're using right now. I'm going to put login above the task list because when you use the application, it will come first. So login is going to be an action that gives back an OK of views dot HTML dot login one and our login one didn't take any arguments again the views start off with errors even though they're probably going to be happy you know it's possible I, I have a problem in here but when you refresh the page and it does the compile that will give you a real error if there is one and then my routes I could have a get for a login and actually this needs to be login one controllers dot task list dot login I've typed enough we should check to see if this 
works. So we're going to, I called the route login one, just like we have task list one. Hey, uh, I was gonna put a break between those, that would be nice. Uh, but hey, it's a, that's so not my name. Okay, now if I hit enter on this, it goes to, actually I didn't put in a submit button, so it won't go anywhere. Uh, let's go ahead and let's add a submit button. Input type equals submit. We're just going for the basics here. Okay, let's see if that's happier. We refresh, it recompiles. Mark, a highly secret password. Okay, we haven't added a route for validate login. Excellent, this is, this is what we expect at this point. It's also great to see. Once again, one of the things I love about play is how informative the messages are, especially when you're in developer mode. Okay, so we need to have that validate login path in our routes and in order for the routes to be happy we would need to have a method here so i'm going to call i'm going to do a def validate login and at least to start off with um, i'm just going to return a a string okay now this validate login um, actually let's call this validate login get and it takes username, which is a string, and password, which is a string. Given what we've learned about routing, this seems really awesome, right? This is what we were doing in our earlier application. Seems like a great way to get information inside of here. And I can print out something. You, or how about dollar username logged in with dollar password. Don't print people's passwords, but <laughs> we're going to see just how bad an idea using a password field with get really is here. And then I could put in a get of validate. I'll just call it validate for the route. Controllers dot task list dot validate login. Okay, and username and password are listed out here. They're both strings, so it doesn't specify a type. Excellent, we're, we're making good progress. Let's come over here and let's go back. Refresh the page. So we force a compile, mark my highly secret password. Um, now it's still giving me this, but you can already see what's what's happening up here. Our password is being displayed right up here in the URL. Okay. This would obviously be a horrible, horrible thing to to do. Validate, oh, I typed in validate login one. Bingo, we need to make it so that our action, and this is one of the areas that it frustrates me. I, you know, uh, actually, there is a way of getting around this, but we haven't covered it yet. We'll cover reverse routing. With reverse routing, I couldn't make this mistake. It would become a syntax error. But I had typed in validate login one, and then over here I decided, oh, I'll just shorten it and make it validate one. Those two really have to agree. Otherwise, we have problems. We'll talk about, as I said, future video, we'll talk about how to correct that. So let's try this one more time. Mark. Okay, Mark logged in with pass as the password. But the real problem here is that they get all the arguments show up in the URL and you can't have users login information coming up on your URL. Your login definitely needs to be done with a post. In fact, lots of things need to be done with, with posts. Gets are for calls that are item potent. Okay? The idea is that 
every time that you do a get request, you should get roughly the same page. Okay, in, in an ideal world, you'd get exactly the same page. Of course, you all know that if you go to, for example, Amazon with the exact same URL as one of your friends does, you get back different pages, you have different stuff set up, you'll probably get different ads for different things on a variety of, of pages. But the most important thing is that you can't have it so that the changes are really made. So things that like modify databases or, or just the storage on your website, uh, those should definitely never be done with gets. Those have to be done with posts. So we're gonna close out this video here. We've gotten to the point where we got form data as a get, and we saw that's just, that, that's a bad way of doing it. We'll come back in the next video, and we'll do this instead with, with a post and, and figure out how to handle the data with a post, kind of doing it the right way.